special holiday that's all about the return of Jesus, the rapture of the church, literally everything that we as Christians are living for each and every day. And there's a special day already in scripture commemorated by God himself for this? Yes, please, where do I sign up and what is it all about? Heavenly Minded Home and welcome to today's video. We have a video that comes out each and every day around here talking about all the homey things as we live heavenly minded today and every day to the glory of God. And I am so super excited because tomorrow, sundown, this Friday the 15th, is Yom Teruah. Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. It's got many different names, but it all comes back to the same thing. And I love studying about God's holy days and then celebrating these special feasts as they all point to Christ and are fulfilled by Christ. And that's something pretty exciting. So I want to share with you guys all today how our family is kind of preparing for the big festivities tomorrow, how we're going to celebrate them, and how you and your family can learn more and join in along with us. I will give a really quick PSA here for you guys. If you want to learn more about this, you're interested, you want to know how exactly this all works, where we find it in scripture, how it points to the return of Jesus, I have everything linked down below. We have a whole study course that we've put together. You get a private class page, you get lifetime access, lifetime updates. It's all down in there. There's a printable booklet as you want to study along with your family. There's teaching videos, there's sermons. There's a lot of resources in there. So if you're listening along and you're interested and you do want to know more and you do want to dig in, don't worry, we've got you covered. All of those resources are linked right down below. You guys can go over and get our fall holy days study because it is so important to see that God scripturally gives seven appointed times, seven biblical feasts. And what's really neat is we see them all point to Jesus to be fulfilled by Jesus. Now, the spring feasts were all fulfilled with his first coming. We see that in his death at Passover, going into the grave for unleavened bread, and then rising at first fruits. We see that with the Holy Spirit coming down at Shavuot, and we see that in Acts with the account there with the apostles. And then we see here the fall feasts. These feasts are the ones that will be fulfilled by Christ with his second coming. And that's what makes studying these and celebrating them so exciting. It is, it is our dress rehearsals. We look forward to the Lord's return. And so I love digging into these. I think it's so incredibly exciting. And it really does make just our walk with the Lord and the here and now so rich as we look through these special times and we get to partake in them. We get to understand the depth and the meaning of why it's so important to look for the Lord's return and to truly live heavenly minded today and every day until that time comes. So again, if you want to dig in a little bit deeper, you want to know exactly what I'm talking about with all these things I'm saying here, the link's down below for you all. So the first thing that I quite literally do when getting ready to celebrate Yom Teruah is to prepare our menu. I love celebrating God's holy days. I think they're so exciting and you can make it as complex or as simple as you want it to be. I know for us, the first year celebrating, I was really kind of worked up. How do I go about this? What exactly do I do? This is so new, so foreign to us as we are Gentiles. We are not Jewish. We did not grow up with this. And at the same time, I didn't want to just take in a bunch of traditions. I wanted to look biblically at what did God say to do? And so again, that's why we have that course and that study where we literally go through the scriptures and literally look at where these things came from and how they will be fulfilled. And so for us, when it comes to preparing a menu, we keep it really simple. We don't get super complex with it. Um, we also are more of a carnivore, ketivore way of eating family. And so we're very meat heavy in our home. And um, that works out quite well for most of these things. And we're going to have a bunch of company over this year. So we love inviting friends and family over to come and celebrate with us. And this year we're going to have a full house for Yom Teru, which is really exciting. And so if you want to celebrate tomorrow evening or Saturday even, as this is the, the feast, the time in which no man knows the day or hour. And so it's actually celebrated for two days because it doesn't officially begin until the new moon can be seen by at least two witnesses with the naked eye over Jerusalem. And so no one 
actually knows ahead of time when it's going to start. And so you kind of prepare for a two day festivity. For us, I like to kind of get my menu put together so I can put my order in and have it ready to go so that we can come together and truly celebrate and take the special time of just gathering and worship. And so for us, our menu this year is very, very simple. I think doing something like a simple beef chili is something that our family really likes um, that we can put together and have as like a little bit of an appetizer, especially with it getting cooler outside, having a warm cup of chili, you can't really go wrong with that. We're going to do grilled steaks. My husband is the grill master and so he will be out there with just a big tray of steak that he can cook for everyone. And then leaning more into the ketovore side of things where carnivore is when you eat just meat products, ketovore is when you maybe bring in a few things. And for our family, these two things are totally not on point with a carnivore way of eating, but they're special to our family as they are tradition. And so our kids were wanted to make sure that they would still have these special things. And for us, we like to make a challah bread um, to come together and partake in communion together. And our daughter Lily is quite the baker. And so this year she wanted to be the official bread maker. And so she's gonna do that. What we like to do is usually use a sourdough starter and ferment the bread a little bit so the grains are a little bit easier on our systems. And then we like to make some miniature apple pies as it's very traditional over Yom Teruah to do apples and honey, um, pomegranate. And so we're gonna do little miniature apple pies to have as our special treat for Yom Teruah. I am very, very thankful for Hi Cozy sending over this amazing ice maker. And I'm gonna tell you why. There's something about pulling together a special meal and doing something that feels a little festive. And something that our kids really love is we do a love your neighbor day every, you know, at the end of winter, beginning of spring, and we usually do Shirley Temples and we make everything really pretty. Got a bunch of girls in this house, we like pretty things. And so something the kids wanted to do as we were planning out our menu was to have pretty glasses. I usually pick up vintage glassware from the thrift store and to have a pretty drink to go along with it. And so Hi Cozy sent over this super fancy ice maker. We're old school. We don't even have a fridge with like an ice machine in it. Um, so maybe we're just super behind the times here, but they sent over this ice maker that makes that really awesome little nugget ice. Like you get it Sonic or um, who else has it? I think Zaxby's is another one that has like the really good ice. And so having a nice ice machine to go with a fancy drink was like the perfect combination for our super special celebration here. And so um, especially having a bunch of guests over being able to have this like large quantity production is totally on point for exactly what we're trying to do with our special celebration here. And so we've got our high cozy machine running. So we've got lots of ice being made. And then we've picked up this just beautiful glassware. Again, just cheap, <laughs> inexpensive glasses. I usually pay like 49 cents a glass from the thrift store. So we're going to do these super beautiful and special sparkling cider mocktails for everybody for our special gathering celebration our special dinner here for Yom Teruah and um, the girls love it they're like we can cut up little apple slices and kind of garnish the drinks and just have it look really sweet and really pretty um, and that will just be kind of a fun little added touch I think there is something so special about being homemakers and kind of going that extra mile. There's like the extreme of it where you become a Pinterest mom and everything's just about the look, but then there's the healthy balance side of it where it's nice to do little special things to really serve your home and your guests in a special way and to make these memories and to have these traditions together. So again, thank you to Hi Cozy for sending over this ice machine. We are obsessed. I don't know how we've lived so long without an ice maker. So if you guys are looking for one, of course we will link this down in the description. So if you're looking for something that is good quality. It's going to crank it out. I think especially with all of the fall feasts coming up and all the special gatherings and celebrations we're going to be having, we're definitely going to get this thing a run for its money. So really excited. Of course, we're going to share with you guys exactly how everything goes down. Be right back here on Monday for our vlog so you can see it all in action and see how our sparkling apple cider mocktails come out. But that is what our menu is looking like. Let's see what else we need to do to get ready for Yom Teruah. Now that my menu is prepared, my grocery order order is in. I've got a nice full thing of ice being made. Like we're good to go for that. The second thing that I really like to do to prepare
prepare for the biblical holy days, especially with Yom Teruah coming up tomorrow evening, is to prepare the home. Now, again, you can make this as complicated as you want to, but it can also be as simple as you would like. And I like to keep it rather simple. So what we're doing this year is first and foremost, I like to go through and just give the home kind of an overall tidy. I want to be able to appreciate and enjoy this time, especially for our home. Of course, we have family flying in. We have Yom Teruah beginning, and then we have our son's 19th birthday. So we've got a jam packed next few days going on. And I want to be able to be present. I think that's so important. I know I struggled for far too long being that mom who was just way too worried about everything being perfect and everybody just, you know, everything being a certain so and so that I didn't really enjoy the time. And so I like to make sure that this is part of the preparation. I give everything a nice once over. If you guys want to know how I keep our home, how I tackle these things, I like to just implement my weekly home blessing hour before everything. So I've kind of knocked it all out. You guys, I'll leave it in the show notes down below. I do have my simplified approach to the fly lady system that I use. I share it with you all. So if it can be a blessing to you in your home, there you go. You can go check that out. But I'm going to give the house just a nice once over so that way everything's done and taken care of and I don't have to worry about it. I can be present and enjoy. Now, another thing I like to do is to add some little touches again, kind of like I said about making like a special little drink that, you know, is just kind of fun and feels a little fancy and special for the occasion. It's the same thing with adding some little touches around the home. Um, there's something so beautiful and so simple about just adding these little special details that really do make it feel festive, make it feel special and important from any other just regular day because the gathering of Yom Teruah really is important and really is a special time. And so for us, what I did this year, we have some special little things around our home that actually came from Israel. And I'll share more about that with you guys next Monday. So be sure when you subscribe to turn on the bell notification so you see our vlog and exactly what I'm talking about here. But we have some special things that we've gotten from different, you know, boxes and things from Israel that we keep around our home. And for us, they're just little mementos to point us to how important it is to be heirs of the promise, to be these adopted children, to truly follow the Lord. And so we have little things like that around, but then to kind of make it just special as we move into this next season, right? And the autumn season is coming in, this time of Yom Teruah, the weather's starting to change. And so my kids and I stopped by Dollar Tree the other day Day, and I think I picked up about $10 worth of just little goodies to kind of bring in and make a space that feels a little festive, a little fitting for the season. Now, again, you don't have to go overboard. It doesn't have to be crazy. And contrary to the belief of some people who leave me weird comments here on YouTube, I'm not just trying to fill every nook and cranny of our home with junk. Thank you, kind, loving people that leave me comments. But I do like to find special little things that we can add into our home that make the space feel fun. And so we picked up these different goodies here and I love just kind of taking the time to set a little tablescape, to set something that makes our meal when we come together just feel extra special, feel a little fancy, feel just lovely as we gather with our loved ones to celebrate such a special time. And so these are the things that I've gathered gathered and at least how I think it's going to come together for our special meal tomorrow. Now that we have a space that's clean and tidy, it's ready, it feels a little festive and beautiful, we're ready to go. What's more important than all of it is that we've prepared our hearts. And for any of you that are part of our membership group, we're doing the Homemaker Boot Camp this month where we're talking about preparing our hearts and our homes for the upcoming cozy season. And you know we've been talking a lot about the heart of the matter, right? We never want to overlook that. And if you guys would like to come join us, you can absolutely do so. You'll get the link down below. Why celebrate Yom Teruah? Why does this matter? Why the Feast of Trumpets? Why God's holy days whatsoever? What does this all point to? Why are we even gathering for a special meal? Why are we doing these different things? How do we see in the world around us the stage being set for the return of the Lord? How does this impact our each and every day? Yes, this is a special kind of two days that we gather and we celebrate and we do these really fun things, but why? Why does that impact every single day that we have until be it by death or rapture, we're reunited with the Lord? We never want to overlook the heart, the root, the why. And again, friends, that's genuinely why we share these study classes. We encourage you to go through them, to go through them as a family, to listen to the sermons, to look at the resources, and to really understand 
the why. I want to dig into it. I want to understand this. I want to study the theology and eschatology and everything behind it. And I want to make sure that I'm discipling my children so that way they know as well. They understand why these next things I'm going to be talking about are important and why we do them and why it may not look like everyone else, but it's really a big deal to us. We have to dig into the why. Now, a really fun tradition that our family looks forward to every year would be preparing our oil lamps. Now, if you read the parable in Matthew 25 about the 10 bridesmaids, it's an amazing parable. It's an amazing study. Of course, we dig into it over in the class study, so you guys get all the details over there. But the moral of the story there that Jesus is telling is he's talking about the importance of being alert being watchful, being ready. And so our family likes to commemorate that and kind of just remember that, to discuss that, to really make sure that our hearts are prepared by pulling out some oil lamps. Now, ever since starting celebrating this, and you guys can see all of our vlogs in years past of us kind of finding the feasts and celebrating them, I'll link the playlist down in the description. But we've done many different types of oil lamps. You can do something as absolutely simple as taking a small mason jar, a, vessel of some way, putting a wick in it and filling it with olive oil. It's really super simple. You don't even have to spend a bunch of money or anything like that. We kind of have become obsessed with oil lamps. And so um, whenever we're at a thrift store and we see one, this one actually came from Israel. Um, so that's really cool. We've gotten some from church family. Whenever people tend to find oil lamps now, they usually send them to us and we're happy with that. We'll take them all. But we love taking our oil lamps, filling them with olive oil, lining them up in the windows, and keeping them lit throughout Yom Teruah. It's really just that reminder of that parable there in Matthew 25 and how important it is to be those bridesmaids who are alert, who are watching, who are ready, looking for the bridegroom. And so something simple like just making a little oil lamp or, you know, if you've got kind of a neat one, kind of lighting that and having it out there, it's just neat to kind of have that visual representation of the parable there to discuss it as a family and to make sure that we truly are ready, watching and waiting each and every day. Now, the fifth and final thing here of all the fun things we've talked about for celebrating Yom Teruah, these things wouldn't be complete without a shofar. Yom Teruah is quite literally the Feast of Trumpets, and so you have to have a trumpet for the Feast of Trumpets, obviously. We prepare our shofar. Now, this one is really exciting. This was a gift to us. It literally comes from Israel again, so it just kind of makes it special, makes it fun. Um, I will say that it is not very easy <laughs> to actually get proper noise to come out of this. My husband is the only one in our house that can actually make it work, so he's our official shofar blower. But Yom Teruah is signified with 100 specific blasts of a shofar that are called out to commemorate this, right? To show that it is the time. Now is the time for Yom Teruah. Our family loves to pull up a live feed of the Wailing Wall over in Jerusalem and listen and actually hear the shofars being blown in Jerusalem. It's really exciting. Again, we'll leave a link. You guys will see it in our vlog next Monday, but we love listening to the shofar blast, but we like having our shofar prepared as well. Every biblical holy day goes on a lunar cycle because God's calendar, it's sundown is what starts a new day. And so at sundown for us, we like to sit down, to gather, to have our meal, to partake in communion, and then to go outside to look for the new moon and to blow the shafar. So we love having this one. Like I said, my husband, he's in charge of doing it. The kids try as hard as they can, but it usually doesn't work out very well. So for them, what they can also totally do is just shout and use their voices or things like a toilet paper roll, a paper towel roll if you have those or something simple like that. They can totally make their own shofars so that way they can go out and blow their trumpet blasts as well as we signify this time of Yom Teruah. We look forward to the great shout that is to come and truly just understand what it means to be Christians living for the Lord's return. So just like the Apostle Paul tells the church in 1 Thessalonians, encourage one another with these words, right? These are these things we're looking forward to. Let out these blasts of joy and excitement as we encourage one another with this. We celebrate these appointed times, God's Moedim, and we look forward to the great and wonderful day when the Lord will return here soon.
So friends, this is how our family is quite literally preparing our hearts and our home for the biblical holy days, especially with Yom Teruah coming up here soon. Now, the course study is going to be over there for you guys if you want to join it. We have Yom Teruah, then we've got Yom Kippur, we've got Sukkot. We have a lot of exciting things still going on as we kind of kick off this autumn season and God's holy days that point to the Lord's return. We are so excited to celebrate. We have the best time. Then, like I said, our son's birthday is right after it. We've got family coming down. It's just going to be a wonderful, wonderful time all together. And so you guys will have to let us know down in the comments if you and your family are celebrating and where you guys are at. We're in Western North Carolina. Where are you all? Hopefully we hear shouts everywhere as we come together. We celebrate these special times and we look forward to the Lord's return. If you guys have any questions about this, how exactly we're doing something or what our take on something is, anything to do with the holy days, the holidays, whatever it might be, be sure to leave us a comment down below as we're going to do a special Q&A this Saturday answering y'all's questions about the holy days, about our celebrating them, kind of why we don't do the kind of man-made holidays, but why we do the holy days. We're going to share that all with you guys this Saturday. So comment down below so Sabrina will make sure to get those and include them in our weekly Q&A. Otherwise, I'm going to go finish up my tidying and my getting ready for our company and our celebrations, and we will see you all right back here tomorrow. Bye, friends! Thank you.